Hey guys, what's good? Today I'm breaking down and showing you some of those visual effects and eye candy Will Smith's team used on his latest docu-series on YouTube. Let's go. How's it going guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Hey everybody, Dave here. I hope everybody's doing well. This video is brought to you by Envato Elements, but we'll get to that later. The other day I finished Will Smith's docu-series on YouTube and I thought the team did an excellent job. I'm such a fan of Will Smith, obviously, but his team is excellent. I follow them on Instagram and I'm such a fan of their work. And I thought some of the effects they used to complement the storyline in the docu-series were great. So I'm gonna break some of them down and definitely keep them in my arsenal for any docu-style videos coming up in the future. The first thing we're gonna break down is a CRT typewriter kind of effect they use to just really thread everything together. So this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna open a new sequence and there's a few ways of doing this, finding some kind of CRT image, which I'm just gonna grab from Envato Elements or making your own grid. So let's go with the first one. I found this cool PSD on Envato Elements and I'm simply gonna take out the text from the middle. Next, I just select out all the layers, merge them, and then went to the top photo and inverted that. So it was Command I. And it kind of gives me a ballpark of what I need. And then I messed around with the image and got it closer to what I wanted. Now all this is preference, but I kind of wanted it on more on the blue side. Next, I exported this image ready to go into Premiere. And that's kind of the starting point. Next, I added an adjustment layer and added a bit of a vignette to the image. Then I added some text, popped it in the middle. Now for this one right here, I mean, we can just use the text here and animate that so we get that typewriter effect. You can check out videos by Nick and Herman that have both done videos about text effects and using motion graphics in your videos. But for this one, I'm just gonna cheat and do something really basic. I'm just gonna screen record myself writing this out. And when you screen record, you do have to commit to the font you use, but it means that you don't have to add sound effects because I had my microphone on and all my keystrokes are synced up. I'm gonna crop the screen recording and I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply. So we get rid of that white and I'm gonna use what I typed out originally as a guide to really resize this and make sure it's as centered as possible. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some chromatic aberration to that. I'm gonna mask it out so it only affects my letters. And for this one, I'm just gonna shift the colors to where I want them. I'm not after anything major, just some minor displacement of the colors to give me that CRT effect. Now, if you wanted to make your own grid first, go to new item and black video, select the black video, drop the black video on the timeline. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an adjustment layer, drag the adjustment layer up top, go to your effects and look for the grid effect. You get something like this. First of all, you wanna go into your size form and set that to width and height. And then you make the adjustments to the grid to where you feel it's right. Change the blending mode to add. Then go back to my effects and look for lens distortion. Drag that onto the adjustment layer. Adjust that to where you feel it's right. Next, I'm gonna go to my transform tool. Add that onto the adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna resize to get rid of the white borders. Now, one thing I discovered was I wanted to add some chromatic aberration to this. And if you drag that onto your adjustment layer, you get this, that the effect requires GPU acceleration. So don't do that, just nest the clips. And then after that, drag an adjustment layer on top of that, add your chromatic aberration to the adjustment layer. And then you'll be able to adjust and get it just right for what you need. And I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm just gonna go up to my Lumetri and add a vignette to that. So that looks pretty cool. Copy that text over and you should get something like this. As I said in the beginning, this video is brought to you by Envato Elements and they've got a ridiculous amount of stuff. Over a million assets for you guys to use on your videos and they're running a ridiculous deal at the moment. $9 for the first month. I highly encourage you to try it out. I use it all the time for client work. Looks better, saves me loads of time. Everybody's happy at the end. It's a no-brainer. They've got motion graphics, graphics, video templates, After Effects templates, Premiere Pro templates, and everything's ready to use out of the box. And if it's not, you can modify it to fit your needs. Check out the links in the description. Let's get back to this video. The next thing we're gonna do is pretty much the same, but we're just gonna have everything moving and we're gonna add some animation in there. So I'm gonna take the same background as I had before, and I'm gonna take the screen recording of me writing down my shopping list right here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply. But for some reason, when I add chromatic aberration to that, it doesn't see the edges of the lettering. A way around this is to pretty much nest this, change the blending mode to multiply again, and then 
add chromatic aberration to that. And that seems to work in Premiere Pro. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the background off and right at the end of the animation or the screen recording, I'm gonna take a picture of that. So I'm just gonna export that frame and then I'm gonna come to where I've saved the photo and drop it back into my sequence. So I've got a still I can animate. What I need to do here is add a crop effect, adjust that crop and then change the blending mode to multiply. And when I put a chromatic aberration effect on that, that's gonna be nice and tidy. Now the next part is a bit tedious, but it'll make a difference, trust me. I need to pretty much separate the letters, the words, and the title up here. So the best way of doing this in Premiere Pro is pretty much just cropping the different sections out and then adding them to a new layer. So I'm gonna start with the first part, the title. So I've cropped that out. I'm gonna rename these as I go along because trust me, it's gonna make your life easier when you come to animate and everything. I'm gonna press option and drag up to create a new copy of that. And then I'm gonna click on the crop tool and then pretty much gonna drag this to where I want. And then just keep on doing that until you've got everything done. So there you have it, you've got a clip for everything that we wanna animate. So I'm gonna press I here just so I can come back to that spot when I'm animating everything. Also, to make my life easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Eclipse tool and create a circle purely for a guide. Align that so it's nice and centered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the clips and drop a transform tool on all of them. I'm gonna go to the first one and keyframe position and kind of move to around there. We'll give it a bit of time to breathe. And then I'm gonna move this to where I want it to move. Probably move around there. Let's see what that looks like. So that's around the right length. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, right click on the first keyframe, frame, ease out, and then ease in on the last one. And right around this position right here, I'm gonna keyframe the opacity. So I want it to disappear before it stops. What we can do is we can come to the position click on this and then come in further and speed up or slow down the start, the beginning, the middle of those keyframes. And halfway through that movement right there, I want everything else to start moving around the circle. So I'm gonna come to my first item, bacon. And let's set this as the final position and see what that looks like. And I want that to move right there. Again, ease out, ease in, Let's see what that looks like. All right, I like that. Now I'm going to go to the last one, click in a gap and then press the M key just so I know where the final position should be. Then I'm going to go through all the items and position them around the circle. Make sure you remember to keyframe the position while you're doing this. And then we're going to add ease out and ease in on each one of these. We'll get rid of that guide for now. And this is what it looks like. And what you can do is you can chop it right there where the animation ends, move everything to the side and we're gonna nest the first part of this. Then we can use the flex tool to maybe just increase the duration of that. I'm gonna right click and then go to speed and duration and make sure time interpolation is on optical flow. Click okay and this is what it looks like. And as you can see, we've still got all the individual layers right here and we're gonna animate them further. We're gonna come back up and use that circle as our guide. And basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make everything move one position clockwise. So right around there should be okay. Like give it two seconds to breathe. And this where naming everything really comes in clutch. I'm gonna click on bacon and then move that clockwise. And you don't have to worry about creating a new keyframe because it's just gonna create one itself. And this is what it looks like after I've adjusted everything. So that moves a bit too fast. I'm just gonna find the final position. I'm just gonna trim everything there and delete the excess. And then I'm gonna select everything, nest that as my second clip. And then again, I'm gonna use my stretch tool to stretch that as far as I want. Make sure you right click, go to speed and duration and make sure time interpolation is on optical flow. And when you've done it all, just make sure you change the blending mode of the nested clip and make sure in the nested clips, you just add a white background to show it blends a bit better. And this is what you get at the end. Obviously you can change parameters around and just get it the way you like it, but this is just a starting point to get you going. The next visual effect is really cool because it summarizes the whole series into like three or four seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clip from Envato Elements of this guy running 
just as Will Smith is in the Docker series. It's pretty much perfect, this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotoscope this guy out. We've done tons of tutorials on After Effects where you can roto the guy out or using Runway ML. I'm using Runway ML because I think the AI is really powerful and it's really easy to do. So I'm gonna do that. And after you do that and export the clip, you end up with something like this. So I've got the clip right here and I'm just gonna drop the green screen clip right around there. I'm gonna go into my effects and I'm gonna drop an ultra key effect and key out that green. But the reason I'm doing this is to add some effects and really have the subject unaffected. Next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this scratchy kind of texture I found on Envato Elements and drop that around here. The reason I'm leaving all these gaps here is just in case I wanna add some more elements in there and then I'll consolidate everything. Now I'm gonna to come to my effects up here and change the blending mode to screen. Now it's a bit too intense that, so I'm just gonna drop it down to about 27. Looks about right there. So I'm adding some interest in there. Now in the docu-series, there's a rotating keyboard in there and I found a perfect one on Envato Elements in their stock video section. So I'm just gonna take that, drop it around there. Obviously it's a bit too intense here. So I'm just gonna come to my opacity and just drop the opacity of that and probably zoom out. I think it's 4K, so I'm just gonna zoom out, yeah. Scale it down to 50%. And that's about right. So I'm starting to get somewhere now. Next, I'm gonna add a film burn just to add a bit of interest in there. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is some letters. In the original, you've got some letters in there. So I'm gonna add them just again to add some interest. I'm gonna go into my text tool and just type some stuff in. Adjust the size of that. Next, I'm gonna go to my effects and look for a Gaussian blur and add that onto my text just to add a bit of depth. Then I'm gonna go up to the position and give it a bit of movement. So add a keyframe where the position is and then move to the end and just move it along slightly. Nothing too extreme. As a last touch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an adjustment layer up to the top, go up to my metric color tab and just add a bit of vignette just to make sure we're focusing on the subject in the middle. And then you end up with something like this. Next one I wanna show you is this really cool typography they use throughout. I'm gonna to go to my text tool and simply write chapter one. Go to my essential graphics. And then we're gonna go down and change the font for this. Capitalize that. And then I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and centered. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to my effects and add some chromatic aberration. Now the default is a bit too extreme, so I'm gonna calm that down a bit. So that looks nice. Now, ideally, as they have it in the docu series, you can see the tracking animating. So you can see this part right here, this value here, animating. But we can't really do that in Premiere Pro. So what I'm gonna do is come up to my scale and tick this box, uniform scale. And I'm just gonna animate the width. I'm gonna toggle the animation, start a keyframe there. And then I'm gonna come to the end and expand that. And again, I'm not going crazy. 105 should be about right. And I've got something like this. And then the other thing they've got that I think is a really nice touch is this feathered white square under the text. So I'm gonna move this text up and then I'm gonna come to my rectangle tool right here and zoom in and just draw a rectangle around there. Gonna make sure the fill is white and I'm gonna make sure the rectangle is under the text layer. And then I'm gonna come to my opacity and add a mask. So just press the polygon mask and then we're just gonna create a quick mask here. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to create those feathered edges. Let's jack up the feather a bit. And then I'm gonna come to my opacity and just turn the opacity down. So that looks really nice. Next, I'm gonna animate that. So under video, I'm gonna go to motion, keyframe the position, and then go to around there, move that along slightly. And then I'm gonna ease out the first keyframe and then ease in the second one. So I end up with something like this. So we've got movement across, really subtle, but it's just such a nice touch. Now the last thing is how they simply display photos throughout the whole series. Really simple kind of slide so I'm gonna take two photos from Envato Elements. So this is the first photo right here. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a crop tool and let's scale this just so the top and bottom edges are filling the frame. I'm gonna reposition this right around there. And then what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna use a transform tool and I've done this quite a lot in previous tutorials but I use this a lot I'm gonna drop the transform effect above the crop so if I'm moving the photo I'm within the parameters of that crop I'm gonna have one image zooming in and then the other one zooming out so let's have this one zooming in let's go to the beginning of the photo keyframe scale let's move to 110 so I've got a simple kind of movement here Let's reposition that so it's a bit more centered. And then in the other gap right here, I'm gonna add the other photo. So the other photos around there, let's resize that. That's about right. And then again, I'm gonna add a crop effect and then the transform effect right above that. First, let's select the crop and kind of leave a bit of a border there. And then go up to transform and reframe that. So with this one, we're gonna have it zooming out, keyframe the scale, Let's start with 115, reframe that, and then move to the end. So you got something like this, one zooming in, the other zooming out. And then we're gonna add some textures on top of that. I've grabbed these textures from Envato Element again. So the texture is, again, I'm just gonna use this scratchy kind of texture. Make sure the blending mode is on screen. And I'm just gonna have the opacity at 41, just so it's subtle, nothing too ridiculous. Copy that on top of the other photo. And after you've done that, you end up with something like this. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new today. If you got any questions or requests for future videos, drop them in the comments below. All the relevant links to this video are in the description, so check those out. Thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring the video. Like, subscribe, click on that bell. We've got videos dropping every single week. If you wanna say hi to me personally, I hang out on Instagram most of the time. Dave the Greco is the handle. Till next time, guys, peace.